Um, so this one's a little bit different from usual. Uh, I'm not going to make it very long, but um, we'll call it a history video, but also I think it's very um, relevant still. Um, I came across this report in the Daily Mirror the other day about a young airman who was killed in World War Two, And um, I was intrigued by the story, so I thought I'd uh, read a bit more on it. And I just want to draw attention to it, really, and, um, you know, it acts as a reminder of the sacrifice that was, was paid at that time. Um, so uh, the young airman was called John Hare, and there's a few links to this. I'll put them in the video, but uh, I imagine there were many similar incidents to this during the war, but I'll just read out a little bit. Um this is from a local Isle of Wight um, uh, new, new site uh, from 2019. Heroic RAF pilot remembered with unveiling of memorial in Areton, or Areton. Um, a granite memorial in memory of a 20 year old, in memory of 20 year old John Keaton Chair, who was killed when his hurricane was shot down over the Isle of Wight in 1940, was unveiled during a special ceremony in Areton yesterday. A crowd of 150 people gathered alongside the A9 Bridal Way for the commemorative event to remember Sergeant Hare, who served for his country in the RAF Volunteer Reserve during World War II. The event was organised by the Battle of Britain Historical Society. Um, and then in another site, the RAF's own site, um, it's a similar circumstance to this. Um, John Keaton Chair was a typical 20 year old Battle of Britain pilot. Keen to engage the enemy, but young in service and experience, which ultimately led to his untimely death over the Isle of Wight on the 6th of November 1940. His hurricane was damaged and burning fiercely from combat with the Luftwaffe when he made an instant decision to stay with his aircraft until the last moment, hoping to miss a small village below. He had been in the same situation over the island only 10 days previously, and not only just got away with it, landing safely on the beach. Unfortunately, this time he had miscalculated, and by thinking of others first, he was uh, too low when he finally jumped off the wing, his parachute not having time to deploy properly. Sergeant Hare crashed into a plowed field near Ayrton Village, staying alive just long enough for the local vicar, the Reverend Burbage, who rushed to his aid to give him a final blessing. Um, so it's a very sad case, but it also shows the, the courage of this young man, only 20 years old, um, so a little bit on his background, he was born in September 1920, which is exactly the same month my late grandmother was born, um, and he was born in Belfast in Northern Ireland, also my home city, uh, my birth city. Uh, he was later given the knitting and bunny by his RAF colleagues and was one of three children to Sydney and Nora Hare of 122 Earlswood Road, Belfast. After leaving school, John joined the Northern Ireland Civil Service, qualifying as a clerk on the 23rd of November 1938. As any 18-year-old would, he wanted to be a bit more excitement than filling out paperwork, and John enlisted in the RAF Volunteer Service during the summer of 1939. John was sent to No. 1 Elementary Flying Training School at Hatfield, Hertfordshire, on the 4th of November to begin his flying training. Along with other students, he stayed at digs called Oaken Gates in St Albans Road, Hatfield, while attending the number two uh, war course attached to a flight uh, here is seated below. I'm going to uh, connect the link, you'll see this. He's, um, he's the youngest person in the photo, I believe, uh, in the centre of the front row. Uh, so this is just one of many stories of heroism during World War II. This young man uh, could have ejected sooner, but he saw the village um, and he stared away from it. And probably presented, uh, prevented mass casualties in that incident. Uh, so he was unquestionably a hero. Um, just twenty years old. Uh, so uh, I'm pleased that the local community there has honoured him. Uh, I imagine there were other similar incidents during the war. Uh, just for context of how extensive that sacrifice was, fifty-five thousand airmen uh, of the RAF died in World War Two. So that's British Commonwealth, uh, also Poles and Czechs, 55,000 of them. Um, and the ratio of Air Force deaths was a lot higher than the Army and the Navy. Um, 
I heard somewhere, I, and don't quote me on this, it may not be exact portion, but it would be similar or near enough. Uh, one in 100 soldiers died, one in 20 sailors, or maybe one in 50, and um, one in three, one in three airmen, uh, particularly during the Battle of Britain, died um, during World War Two. So whilst all the servicemen were brave in fighting for their country, um, I think it took particular courage to get behind uh, the wheel of a plane and engage in those dogfights. And, um, you know, often they died in very, very brutal and tragic ways. Uh, there's a scene in the film Dunkirk where it shows an RAF airman and a very tense scene where his plane has been bound. It's in the channel. It's slowly filling up. Um so we should never forget their sacrifice. It sounds like a cliche, but I, I do believe that. Um, I mean, he was just 20 years old. It's possible that he would have lived to be an old man. Um, I mean, my late grandmother just passed away three years ago. He was the same age, so... Or he would have been, rather. Uh, so I'll put links to that, and um, check it out. Thanks for watching.